All right, guys. So I'm gonna do a um, bike breakdown, build breakdown, whatever. Um, I saw one of these videos that GCN made on the lightest bike, and it was really interesting to watch because his bike had like a bunch of really individual touches. And although my bike is not the lightest, or there's not really anything special about it, it has like it's like really a Frankenstein of parts, so so it's I think it's kind of interesting, and um, I'd like to share it with you. Maybe you'll see something that you'll like, and you can copy it. So so yeah. Um, okay, let's get started. So my bike is a Cervelo PTSL. It's a TT frame. It's aluminum size 54 centimeter it has a just a, the factory fork which is the wolf cl fork it's carbon fiber with the aluminum steer tube um before that they came with the wolf tt forks which are heavier but from what i read um they're more aerodynamic so that's weird right then after that they came out with the wolf sl forks but they had like um, defects, so they just continued them quickly. And um, and they, um, what do you call it? They ended their contract with the company that made them. And then that's when 3T started making the forks for them. And 3T at that time, like, I don't know, they just got really big all of a sudden. They had a bunch of stamps and handlebars. And now they kind of seem to have, like, not really disappeared, but they don't really make as much stamps and handlebars anymore. I don't know. Weird, huh? Anyways, back on track. Um, front wheel, Mavic Cosmic Carbon SL, 52 millimeters deep. The rim brake, obviously. The rear wheel is a SRAM S80, um, 80 millimeters deep, obviously. <laughs> I removed all the decals, and um, on the rear, I made my own little sticker cool bitter my own little cool sticker there with the, my brand. All right, so now to the to the drivetrain. The chain ring is KCNC. The arrow one. It's not oval or anything. It sucks because I don't think they make it anymore or something. And it's really hard to find chain rings that are round and arrow. But anyways, fifty three two. 130 BCD um, and I filled in the gaps on the crank with vinyl I just cut out like these like guitar pick shaped vinyls and I stuck it on there and it formed a really nice seamless look so it looks like one piece the crank set Dura Ace 7800 really the, the prettiest crank set ever made um, 172.5 the pedals Dura Ace 9000 the bottom bracket Dura Ace 9000 also um, the front derailleur Dura Ace 7900 the chain I got on there right now is um, Otegra 6700 the 10 speed chain obviously you can't really they don't make 10 speed Dura Ace chains anymore, I think. That's weird. I know there's the KMC chains, and I know people say they're better, but I've ran them before the KMC, the X10 SL, and I don't know, it, it doesn't really feel like it meshes correctly with, with, my, with my drivetrain. Like it feels noisier, I don't know. So that's why I run the, the Otegra chains. They might be heavier, but I mean, I'm okay taking that that loss. The the chaining bolts are KC and C. I still have the Dura Ace bolts, but I, I, the black ones they just look better. And also, I don't like the Dura Ace bolts because you have to use this this like special tool thing. If you guys know what this is, you know it's kind of weird, right? And it's kind of a hassle. And the, the KCNC bolts, they're just an Allen key on both sides, so way easier to service. Um, 
rear derailleur is 7800 this is really like my most favorite group set ever the 7800 just that high polish man it just looks so good i mean granted this is a this was like the top of the line group set when i got into into bikes but i mean still i still think it's the best one like they don't make something like this anymore um yeah so 7800 the pulley the bottom one is my own design like if you go back in my video you'll see and it's still holding up strong man like and I didn't do too bad a job with that. The top pulley is the, the factory door ace because it has that, that float. And that, that helps so much. Um, the cassette, I don't know what it is. It's either a Dura Ace um, 7800 or an Altegra 6700. But I know it is 1225. But um, yeah, I don't know. It, I don't buy door ace cassettes, but I know I had one floating around and I put it on one of them, one of my wheels. That's why I don't know which one it is. But from my experience, the, the door ace cassette seems to wear out kind of fast compared to the Otegras. Which is weird. Um, let's, let's go back up, back up, back up, back up. Right here. My rear brake, I just did a video on this recently. I had all 7800 brakes, but like for the aero look, I kind of switched it up. So I got the, the EE brake on here because it has like that aero tuck where it comes in really nicely to the frame in regards to the cable. And I got my own design on the, the rear face plate, which I made a video on that too. Um, my my saddle is a physique Aris, the red one. Like I really love that seat. It's kind of kind of short, or it is short. Like it's made for TT bikes, and it's sad that they don't make it anymore. Like that's a really nice saddle. It's the most comfortable saddle. I don't have any issues with it. So yeah, I have kind of been hoarding some. Like I bought a couple that were that were still like what do you call it, new old stock. So I should have some left, you know. Uh, my water bottle cage, Arundel Mandible. What color is that? That's the, the flat carbon. Um, yeah. Oh, you know what? I want to really get into detail. So my S80 wheel, you need a valve extender, right? I am running Lezine valve extenders they are the type where you where you um you kind of lock out the nut on your your inner tube and then you put some teflon tape around it and you thread it on and these work fine for me um the only thing is your your pump head you need like a good pump head but if you have like a, a cheapo pump head it's not going to hold tight to the to the thing and it's going to be really difficult to put air in it. So yeah. Oh, my, my skewers. Um, well, I should show you the front one because you can see it a little bit better. My skewers are, um, they're called Lifeline. It's a, it's a house brand by DHB. Or no, wait, it's not DHB. It's a house brand from, from Wiggle like a company in in London and they're titanium with the carbon fiber handle and they work really good and I like the look really really um, simple design <laughs> um, tires right now I'm not like I'm not a sticklier is that what you call it a sticklier for tires but I don't like running pretty cheap tires but I'm not like um, I haven't found that I'm stuck to any brand however I do have been running Michelin tires for a very long time even though part of me kind of feels <laughs> they're not the best tires but <laughs> but I mean I don't know they seem to have worked so far for me right now I'm running 
what up let this siren pass right now i'm running vittoria rubino pros um, i just i got these for free so yeah one thing that i i do stick with um is seven i always run 700 by 23 and um I know like the market and all that study and all that stuff, they say wider tires are faster, but I have run 700 by 25 and it did not feel faster at all. I mean, Grant, it might've been more comfortable, but I couldn't really tell the difference. So I don't know what's going on there. That's weird. Um, my front brake. Oh, you know what? I have run 700 by 21, but it, it looks kind of weird, like on the frame, it, like those tires are really skinny. So 700 for 23 for me, for sure. Anyways, front brake, the tri-rig Omega brake. Um, everything on there is basically factory, except for the bolts for here. I did upgrade these to titanium, like, um, they come with probably just basic steel bolts and I put titanium ones in there. And um, and also I switched out the brake pads. They come with cool stops, I think. And I put Swiss stops in there. Swiss stops just work better for me. Bro, someone's house is on fire. Um, yeah. Oh, talking about that. My rear brake rear brake the brake pads I kept the, the KCNC brake pad holders I don't know if you can see this but but like the KCNC brake pad shoes they have that little winglet thing which is like it works as a heat sink so that's why I, I kind of kept those on there instead of the EE brake ones I don't think there's that much of a weight difference I don't think. I don't know. What? Okay, so um, am I missing anything here? Oh, on my drive chain, I do have a chain catcher. It's just a, a token chain catcher with um. I think that's an. I'm pretty sure that's an aluminum bolt. So yeah. Um, I don't know if it's lighter, but. It, it looks better because it's black and the chain catcher is black, so it, it kind of disappears. Um, okay. Now to the cockpit. Oh, I forgot one thing. So I was talking about the, um, the valve extenders. So I like this valve extender. It, it works pretty easily. Um, I don't like the one where you, you have to take out the valve core and put the extender in and then put the valve core back into the new ex extension because now that creates um, two two points that it could leak and with this one it's, it's you just have one point or whatever um, yeah I did have success with this one which is a Topeak valve extender and this is pretty neat because you thread it on and it has like this thing comes out and you can screw out and in the valve core or whatever but then this one has a tendency to fail like the little plastic thing that goes in there that threads it kind of fails over time or whatever and um yeah so i stopped using these ones and i just run that one over there and i have an inner tube in like my spare inner tube that i carry with me on rides um, I, it already has one of those extenders put on there. So yeah. Like, you're not really deflating your tire and all that, or whatever. And if you get a flat, then it's already deflated, right? So yeah. Um, oh, for air pressures, like, I don't know if I should get this much into detail, but, uh, for the longest time, I always ran, like, super high air pressures because... 
that was like the thing back then. Like you're supposed to run really high air pressures. But the when you buy Michelin tires, they have like a chart on the recommended air pressure depending on your weight. And I actually I used that and I found that the recommended air pressure just felt way better. Like for me, I'm about 140 pounds and the recommended air pressure was was it 106 psi? So I started using that and it felt it felt better. Like I guess I, I wasn't bouncing all over the floor or I mean the ground. So I was just more power was getting to the to the pavement instead of just bouncing all over the ground. So yeah, how weird is that? So maybe you might want to reconsider your air pressure, right? Okay. Now now to the cockpit. Okay. So here's my my cockpit, I guess you're saying. Um, the bar shifters are Dura A7800. Um, the extensions are Vision, the R bends or whatever. And the, the armrest pads are not the ones that come with the, the bars. This is, they make these like these are still vision but you have to buy them separate I forget what they're called um oh i think they're called micro sl and the weird thing about these is um like you can't really use them with the factory screws that come with these bars like you see mine <clears throat> i have the, the spacers installed <clears throat> and when you buy these plates they come with this little shim right here and um and a set of screws and that's basically all you can use but i wanted them higher so i used this spacer and the shim and i went and bought new screws at ace hardware and so that's how i got that to run or to work and um if you go back in my videos you'll see how i made replacement arm pads they're still going well they work really well um, they haven't really squished that much so yeah um, I'm really liking these and I still got a whole bunch of material left over to make more <coughs> and the base bar is also vision it's what is it 25 forget the diameter maybe like 25 millimeter 26 millimeter but it's the old one like the, that small small stem or whatever and um I know that it's illegal now, like this this ratio or whatever, this shape is illegal. But I mean, I'm not racing under any UCI rules or whatever, so it's good. <coughs> um, handlebar tape is um, Shimano Pro. I forget which one, but all I know is that it's always out of stock. But it's, it's the thickest one that they make, or the thickest one available from any manufacturer. However, when it's not in stock, I did find a replacement. And it's this one. So let me show this to you in case you like this. It's called... Are you in focus? It's called... It's made by Cannondale. Something filled out. What was that? I don't know where this came from. <laughs> but look, it's, it's made from. It's made by Cannondale, and I think it's just regular cork tape or maybe synthetic tape. But it is. Oh, it says EVA foam, and it's 3.5 millimeters thick. Cannondale Synapse handlebar tape. So. Yeah, it's just basic bar tape, but it's it's the thickest one they make. And I like buying the thickest one because it gives you some padding. And like, it always squishes down anyway, so. So if you buy 3.5 millimeter, it's, it's gonna probably um, collapse to around 2.7 millimeters. So that's why I buy the thickest one. Like since everything on my bike is aluminum, you know, some padding to dampen the vibrations really good yeah so it's either the shimano pro or the cannondale bar tape <coughs> and 
and my stem is also vision it's a size more stem 100 millimeters um i should take this opportunity to talk about my cables the cables are just basic jaguar cables like i don't i don't know about all that fancy wires like the no cons with all these like aluminum housings first of all they look really weird to me and i just like the black cable housing and these work fine with for me like there's nothing there's there's nothing like i don't know it, it works perfect i don't see where there would be gains to be made here so yeah just the jaguar the basic one except for the vision the vision breaks the vision brakes they come with their own wires because the head thing it's super small and there's not a, um, a factory wire that fits in the brake lever so yeah oh the vision brake levers they kind of rattle around so i went to ace hardware and i bought a, bought a o-ring and i squeezed the o-ring in this little silver thing right here and that makes it a little bit um, thicker or not red or whatever oh, I use a Garmin 520 um, still works good I looked at the newer ones like the 530 and the um, the 820 but I like this size and I don't feel like I have to upgrade to the 530 so yeah <coughs> and I have my my own Garmin mount that I designed so yeah, ripping my own brand, man. Um, <laughs> let's go down here. Um, this is the FSA top cap. These are hard to find, but it's eight millimeters and the FSA headset and just a random carbon top cap with the five millimeter spacer or whatever. Um, oh, you know what? I want to mention something. So I have this top cap, it's like this one piece design thing and like the top cap is integrated into the screw and it's a lot lighter than this, even with the titanium bolt, but like before you go out and buy this one, like if you see this around, I'm going to tell you not to, like because I, I know you might say like, well this doesn't really do anything except put tension on the headset and this is the stem is what holds it in place. But every time I run this, this gets loose and I'll get play in my headset. So that's why I stop using these and I go back to this. So that's really weird. Like that's the only variable I change. So, so this must do something, right? And also I want to give you a tip. If you're running the, the size more, or I mean, not the size more, what the heck? The, the Omega brake. I always have problems with um with this going back going back in like I don't know how to explain it like this little the wedge thing like the spring is not strong enough for the wedge to return to its neutral position completely and it'll rattle what I did is I greased all the pivot points like really well and I just wiped the excess and that seems to remove enough friction so that the um the wedge it goes back to its neutral position and that also keeps the brake lever from rattling okay i'm almost done um yeah you know what i am almost done oh last thing i guess like all these things i did upgrade all the bolts on my bike to titanium and there's enough of them that it made a significant difference in the weight. Like there's one, two, three, um, there's two for this, so two, four, on the stem, six, seven, two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. And then the bottle cage is 10, 11. And then um, on this thing right here, the, uh, what do you call this? The for seat posts, whatever, 12. And then there's one under underneath um <clears throat> underneath the um underneath my tail light for the seat post head, so that's another one. 
and then there's another one holding down the um, on this bike at least holding down the um, the cable guide for the the front derailleur. So yeah, and even another one on my my seat post in here on the the seat post like one of these bolts. It it snapped, and you can buy it from Cervelo, but it's like thirty bucks. And I found a titanium one that worked, and that was only seven bucks. And with shipping, it was like ten bucks. So I bought that, and so now that titanium, that bolt is titanium. Like I really, I got really lucky that I didn't fall or anything when that snapped. So um, so um, yeah. And I tested it. I don't know if the factory one is steel or something, but the titanium one. It, it was rated at being stronger than steel or aluminum. So that was part of the reason that I went with that boat as well. Like you don't want that, you don't want that snapping off on you, right? So yeah, if you have like a similar bike from this era, um, that's one of the things that you can look into replacing that boat with the titanium one. Oh, and another thing, if you have this similar bike, um, the seat post, they have, it has this shim in here from the factory. It's like made out of brass, but I found that it's still not enough. <clears throat> so what I did, I have an extra one here. Out of a soda can, I made another shim. So I run the factory shim and this shim, so two shims. And that makes it much tighter fit. And um, I don't know, it just feels, it feels better. And the reason I did that is because it started to crack right here, where the cutout is. So I knew that that shim was too small. And I took it to a, I have a friend who welds and he welded it with, with aluminum and I just, Paint it over it. You can't even you can't even tell where the repair was done. But he said um, it was all right. And I mean, he's actually the one who recommended the shim because he looked at how it was cracking and he said it's cracking because it's bending too much. And um, that's where I got the the soda shim. So yeah, if you have the same frame, look into that. Even um, the other one, what is it, the, the, the Solis team, my, I got the, um, the road bike version of this, the Cervelo Solis team, which later became the S1. So yeah, that's why I have a, another shim because I'm, I made it for the other one. Um, I guess we're almost done. We are done. I just want to share one last thing. So I made a video on my tail light, the Blackburn Day Blazer, the 65, and some of the mods that I made. But there's one more mod that I, I guess I'm gonna share with you in this video. Um, so the O-ring for this, this is the factory one. And you see how thick it is? It's kinda, it looks kinda fat. Well, I was at Ace Hardware and I remembered seeing a really big o-ring but it was skinny and so I went back there and I bought it and it works fine it's just just o-ring but since it's skinnier it looks nicer so yeah if you have this tail light you might look into getting that because it just looks nicer than the fat one <clears throat> anyways that is That is all on on my bike. Um, thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys maybe liked some of the tips that I shared. I know some of the last ones I shared were actually kind of critical. So yeah. Any questions, you know, just post and I'll answer. Like if you have a question on how I made this sticker, you know, I might make a video on that soon. Because to get that radius, it was kind of tricky, but it's actually, it's not that hard. So yeah. Anyways, thanks. Bye.